Our time in the Bahamas is coming to an end. We will have sailed just under 500 nautical miles in 19 days. The main purpose of the trip was a cruising test, not only for the vessel, but for us, to discover if we are capable of harnessing the wind to travel to uninhabited islands, navigating to unknown destinations, understanding the weather and how to handle storms, making our own water, generating power mainly from the sun, and living self-sufficiently. These were the questions we needed to answer before officially casting off the lines and cruising full-time. I'm Kristen, this is Fabio, and this is our dog Yoda. After years of research, planning, and hard work, the adventure is beginning. We're leaving Fort Lauderdale for the Bahamas. Crystal clear water and varying shades of blue. White sand beaches. Days spent snorkeling with sharks and stingrays. Join us as we finally arrive in this stunning natural playground and begin our next act as live aboard cruisers. We are now beginning our journey back to Fort Lauderdale. The goal is to be back by May 5th, so we have four days to travel just over 200 nautical miles. We are sailing during daylight hours only, so we'll sail Highborn Key to West Bay on New Providence, West Bay to Chubb Key, Chubb Key to Cat Key, and Cat Key to Fort Lauderdale. We left Highborn Key at about 7 a.m., pointed towards West Bay on New Providence, a 46 nautical mile sail. Winds were forecast to be 11 to 16 knots from south southeast, so we planned to hoist the main and pull out the screecher. To harness the power of the wind to travel is pretty incredible. To do it successfully is a combination of the vessel's prowess and the sailor's skill. We have thoroughly enjoyed sailing throughout the Bahamas and gained a better understanding of the boat and how to optimize performance, though that will be an ongoing process, which of course is part of the fun. We arrived at West Bay in the early evening and dropped the hook close to where we anchored previously on our way down to the Exumas. The public beach was still in full swing and it was great to see everyone enjoying the beautiful weather.
Night turned to day, and soon we were pulling up the anchor to continue the next leg of our journey from West Bay to Chub Key. so it doesn't shave we have the sail out with this this side of the uh, starboard side of the main sheet and uh, the preventer it's as out as it can go because it's almost touching the uh, shrouds so this is the best downwind sail that we can do until we get our spinnaker Today is Monday, May 3rd, and we left West Bay on New Providence Island about 10 a.m. and we're headed for Chub Key. We're just really retracing our route to get back to Fort Lauderdale. We've got about 15 knots of true wind from the southeast, so it's almost directly behind us. So we've got our screecher out and main up and we would love to have a spinnaker but we don't have it yet so uh, we're doing the best we can with this sail plan got a little bit of chop like from following seas probably about three foot but sun is shining and it's going to be a kind of a shortish 30 nautical mile sail
downwind with like 20, 21, 22 knots of wind and we had a full main and the screecher out so we wanted to take the main down so we had a little bit more control because there's also like six foot waves from the stern. So we furled the screecher, dropped the main and then pulled the screecher back out and turned on a bit of engine. Uh, so we're just going with the screecher and a little bit of the engine just so we have more control with those high winds. And we're gonna fish. Oh yeah. And now, also, we're gonna put out the fishing line again. Our poor little guy, he's gotten bitten a couple of times, but no keepers so far. Something. I hope so. We're near the pocket. What is the pocket? It's the place near Chubkey where the water goes from like 4,000 feet to like 20 feet very quickly. So apparently, especially with south southeast wind, which is what we have, the fish get kind of pushed up into this pocket of shallow water, and there's like a lot of fish there. And right now we see a good bit of sargassums, and then fish love to eat that, so hopefully we'll catch something. If we don't, we're definitely the worst oh. fishermen. Oh my god, yeah. No, we need bait if we don't catch something. Unfortunately, we did not catch any fish. The seas became quite rough, so we were happy to be tucked in behind the rock jetty at Chub Key. The next morning, we rose with the sun and commenced the third and longest leg of the trip, 77 nautical miles to Cat Key, just south of Bimini. Get through this like field goal here. <laughs> field goal. Like, can you make this any smaller? I know. Well, slow down. I'm in neutral. You want me to go back? One down. Awesome. So we're gonna be on a kind of a broad reach. Yep. So we're gonna put this the screecher up yes. until we get here. Then we're going that way, so we're gonna put, go with the jib. You agree? 
go with the jib. After that spawn, you're gonna go with the jib. Okay, so first we pull out Screecher only. Yeah, oh, oh, Screecher and main. Oh, okay, so first yeah. we pull out main. Screecher, yes. Screecher, yeah. and then, and then the Screecher down we go with the Okay. Yeah. All right, so go in the wind. Okay. Forty-five. Thirty. Go back on track? Yeah. Okay. You got it? Almost. Got it. Great. Conditions were very similar throughout our return trip with the wind just off our stern. Sailing the boat became like a choreographed dance. Boom in the center, point into the wind, Hoist and trim the main, secure the preventer, unfurl and trim the screecher. We got everything here, at least to stay alive. And the time that we share makes it over five. Got this place on. Good, but the the bottom telltale isn't flying. Yeah. We arrived at Cat Key with plenty of light and dropped the hook for the last time. We anchored at Cat Key instead of Bimini, even though it's a private island and you're not supposed to go ashore because anchoring at Bimini is a bit limited and Cat Key is nice and protected. You will be the last one to think We 
left Cat Key at about 8 a.m. for the final leg of our passage to Fort Lauderdale. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side, our fears are done. All the good times just begun. Once we got past the cut, winds were a gentle 10 to 13 knots, making for a beautiful calm sail. Our trip to the Bahamas is coming to an end and this was our longest trip on any boat to date. We were away for 18 days and it was a great experience. We learned a lot. We're much more comfortable with the boat and really kind of reading the environment signals. Like for instance, in the Bahamas, the water is all kinds of varying shades of blue and it's absolutely beautiful but the varying shades actually indicate different depths so you can actually sometimes see the deeper water in the path that you're supposed to follow around through all the different islands it was a bit of a rush trip with 10 days on passage three days working, either doing boat work or computer work, and six days out exploring the beautiful Bahamas. The purpose of the trip was to truly use this boat as a cruising vessel so we could figure out any other things that need to be tackled before we head up the East Coast to New England. So we now have a list of projects that we're going to tackle and we're hoping to head up the East Coast the third week of May and we'll be spending the summer in New England. Re-entering busy Port Everglades, we ultimately recognized we are prepared to live the cruising lifestyle and look forward to exploring this incredible planet on our own terms. Of course, with Mother Nature's blessing. Thanks for joining us on this mini adventure. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with a friend, leave us a comment down below, and definitely subscribe. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.